Okay, so today I'm going to show you how I skin a squirrel at home in the kitchen. Um, we're not wearing boots. We're just going to use a pair of hunting shears and a sharp knife. So the first thing I do here is I rinse the squirrel in water. And this does two things. Number one, it drowns any fleas that might be crawling on the body of the squirrel. Uh, when a squirrel dies, the fleas will always go look for another host. In that case, it would be you and you do not want those fleas on your body or crawling on your skin. Uh, number two, it makes sure that any of the fur that's on the skin of the squirrel sticks to the skin of the squirrel and not to the meat itself. You don't want any fur on the squirrel meat uh, because that will basically ruin it. And even though it does happen from time to time, there's ways of getting rid of hair on squirrel meat, which I will be showing you later in this video. You may notice that I've already taken the head off. Taking the head off a squirrel is pretty simple. You just use your game shears and you cut through the skin until you reach its spine. Then you break the spine and cut the rest of the skin until the head falls off. So I'm done rinsing my squirrel here. Uh, I just give it a little squeeze to shake out some of the excess water. And next, I'm gonna take my pair of game shears and cut the tail. Pretty simple, you break the bone, cut the skin, and the tail will come right off. I actually like to save the tails for some future projects, and as you see very soon, um, I also save the limbs of the squirrel for a future product. So right here, I'm cutting the left foot of the squirrel at the ankle joint. Uh, that's the easiest place to cut the foot, and you just break the bone, cut through the skin, Pretty self-explanatory here. Same with the right foot and its hands. And I actually find that the hands are easier to cut um, just because the bone is a little less thick at the joint. Okay, now that we've got the head, tail, and limbs off, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna hold the squirrel by the flap of its skin, and this allows me to make a horizontal cut with the knife. Now, it's not gonna be a big cut, probably one or two inches at most, and the next thing I'm gonna do is turn on the water. You'll see why in a second. And I'm gonna stick one finger in that incision that I just made one finger with both the right and left hand, and then I am going to slowly rip until I can get more of my fingers in there, and I keep ripping, and what I'm essentially doing here is I am separating the squirrel's skin in half lengthwise. And so you're peeling it. I did it a little bit off camera, but that should be the results right here. Uh, this is a younger squirrel, so it's a little bit easier to peel. Um, Right here, I am taking the skin off at the lower portion of the squirrel. Now, squirrel skin really sticks to the meat, so you have to pull pretty hard. So now that that part of the skin is off, I like to save that for future projects. So I've got it put to the side. You can just throw it away if you don't need it. Um, as you'll notice, I'm rinsing all the time here. That's just because I'm getting quite a bit of hair on my hands and a little bit on the meat as well. Uh, so it's very important that you rinse and don't let that fur stick to the meat. So we're pulling the upper half of the skin away from the squirrel now. This part is slightly easier just because there's less surface area contact. Um, I've already gotten off. It took about 15 seconds at the most. So once again, I rinse to get some of that hair off. Um, sometimes individual pieces of hair will stick. In that case, I just use thumb and index finger and remove the hairs one by one. Okay, if you can see, it's very subtle, but the squirrel is still twitching a little bit. That is just natural disinhibition. The nerves are basically sending energy out of its body. Okay. 
Okay, the next step now is to field dress the squirrel, and that's just a fancy word for removing its organs. I take my shears and cut through the pelvis, and then I work my way up laterally, basically splitting the squirrel's muscle in half. Now peel it open like a banana, and its organs will come out just like that. Now you can do this in one motion if you take two fingers and you pinch at the very top of the squirrel near the trachea, pull outwards and down, keeping your fingers behind the squirrel's organs so that they all come out in one piece. And if they don't, don't worry, you can always go back and get the rest later. So now that I have all the organs out, I do one more rinse. And I also like to split the squirrel at the pelvis, just peel it open a little bit more so I can rinse out some of that excess blood. So one last rinse to get rid of any remaining annoying hairs that might still be on the meat. And then I squeeze out the excess water. And at this point, you can go ahead and put the squirrel on your grill or in your frying pan. Um, I actually like to brine them for at least a few hours or even a few days. And so what I'm showing you right here is the squirrel meat as it's been cleaned and field dressed and skinned. Uh, here's a squirrel from yesterday that has already been brining for an entire day. I'm just going to make some more room in this bowl to put our other squirrel. At this point, I cover it and it'll go into the refrigerator for an additional day of brining. So that's pretty much it for skinning and field dressing a squirrel. You really only need two pieces of equipment, a pair of game shears and a sharp knife. And you can do this all in the comfort of your own kitchen. I hope that was helpful and I hope you learned something new today. Stay tuned to Eat a Squirrel for more squirrel content.